Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. The Nikon D650. That's what I'm calling it anyways because of the D850. I'm thinking that's what the name of the Nikon D610 successor is going to be. The update to the 610. We've had the 600, the 610... I guess it could be a 620, but I don't think it's going to be. I think in light of the 810 going to the 850, we're going to see the 610 successor being called the 650. So with that out of the way, let's call it the 650 and let's talk about what we're going to be getting and when we can expect it. First of all, the 600 was released. I was just checking into this because I was thinking it's been out for a while and it was released September 13th, 2012. So we're coming up on six years old if we look at the 600. And that's relevant because the 610 was basically just a refresh of the 600 because if you remember, the 600 had some shutter issues and it was kind of the way Nikon chose to get out in front of the issue was they just kind of released an, a refresh and update to it. Really, the only difference between the 610 and the 600 was a new shutter and an improved white balance. I believe it also went from 5.5 frames per second to six frames per second and there was a new quiet mode at three frames per second with the new shutter. But essentially a new shutter and improved white balance. So it was, it was basically just a way to reassure people it was a new camera, it wasn't the 600, which a lot of people were worried had the shutter issue. I should point out that I still think a 600 is a great deal, namely because people will sell them for a very low price because of the shutter issue and it really wasn't that much of an issue and Nikon will, will deal with it. In any case, the 610 came out, was released a year later, October 8th, 2013, almost exactly a year later. So even the 610, which is the currently selling model, is still um, five years old. So we're way overdue in DSLR terms, in tech terms, for a refresh on this body. So where is the 650? I think there's a good chance we'll be getting a Nikon D650 this year. This is a very, very good selling body for Nikon. It's their entry level, if you will, full frame. But also, it's a very full featured, I mean, it's such a value packed DSLR that it's been a great performer for a lot of people at a great price point, especially with as low as you can get them for now. So I think we are going to see a successor to the 610. I think we're going to see it this year. And then that begs the question then, what will the 650 be? What will it look like? What specs can we expect? I think it's high time for the 24 megapixel full frame sensor, the standard sensor that we're seeing in a lot of bodies now at 24 megapixels. I mean, the 750 is 24 as well. We have Sony's that are 24. I think it's time to see that bump up. So it's possible we may still get a 24 megapixel sensor and just tweaked, maybe perhaps better high SO and better IQ, and that would be fine. That would be good. But even better, if Nikon really wants to put a game changer out there, wants to put a killer camera out there that's going to be a huge sales hit, is we should see a 30 or a 36 megapixel sensor. Ideally, just take the Nikon D810 sensor, put it into the 650, tweak it a little. So because the 810 has now been replaced, we can tweak that sensor with today's current tech, give us another stop of high ISO, give us a little better IQ, and you're going to have a fantastic sensor that's still below 10 megapixels below the flagship, so no threat there. It's already in the parts bin. We just need to tech, uh, tweak the tech behind it, tweak the um, processor and the algorithms and things just to get us that, that new better IQ and that better high ISO. So what I'm calling for here is a 36 megapixel sensor. Essentially, the same one in the 810 would be fine. Just tweak it with the new processing engine. Um, we need 4K, and we're seeing that in the Nikon bodies. We're seeing 4K now in the new ones that are coming out. The 7500 has 4K, the 500 has 4K, um, the 850 has 4K. So we will get it in the 650. What I'd like to see is a very full-featured, very well-flushed-out 4K, not crippled. I'd like to see it with no crop factor. I'd like to see a nice full-frame full 4K in the 650. Um, I'd like to see a very angle LCD. I think this is the way all cameras need to go. That full flip out, very angle LCD, touch screen. And Nikon, I think, can tweak their touch screen abilities here. I think this is an area where they can step things up, make it better. Um, Panasonic does it better. 
Uh, Canon does it better, and I think Nikon can improve here. So there's the opportunity for a better touchscreen. Also, the app can be improved in tandem with that. I think what we need to see is a better app, something more similar to the Panasonic app. I mean, I'm controlling the G85 right now that's filming this with the iPad right here with the app, and it's fantastic. I can adjust almost everything on that app. Nikon should have a hard look at what you can do with the Canon app and what you can do with the Panasonic app and tweak theirs and give us a better offering on the app software. It's possible, it's totally doable, and it would be a big step up for Nikon to tweak that app further and make it more Canon-like or Panasonic-like, just a more fluid, uh, more um, easy-to-use experience with that, that, that offers more power behind it, tap and focus and the ability to adjust everything. Just, you know, make it more study Panasonic's app. Study Canon's app. Both of them are very good. The autofocus system, I think we should see a step up in the autofocus system. I realize this is Nikon's entry-level full-frame camera, and I haven't had any complaints with the 610's uh, autofocus system, but it's not as good as the 750's or the 810's. With the new 850 system out, I think we could inherit the 750, because that's going to get refreshed soon too. So take the 750 or the 810's autofocus system, Put a version of it in the 650 so we get a boost in the autofocus system, but you're still not threatening your newest tech because the 850's got a newer system than that. So just, again, use what we already have. Refine that autofocus system out of the 750 or the 810. Give it to us in the 650. Now, the big thing that ties in with the autofocus system, and we discussed this in the previous video on fixing Nikon, what they really, really need to do, what we need to see in the next camera to know that Nikon's competitive and serious and can go up against Sony and Canon in the area of video and in live view um, focusing is we need a competitor from Nikon to dual pixel autofocus. This really needs to come in the refresh to the 650. It needs to be in the refresh to the 750. And so the 650 would be a great camera to intro that in and they could tweak it further and then put it in the higher end cameras and the lower end cameras. But we need something equivalent to Canon's dual pixel autofocus. The ability to focus swiftly and accurately and most importantly perhaps smoothly during video or during live view. Uh, we just need to see that. Nikon is not competitive in this arena. It's their biggest problem. They, the, the 850 is a sweet, sweet camera. If it had dual pixel autofocus, it would be the best camera on the market but in terms of video that's where it falls down um, and I we just we just need to see something competitive there bunch of small things we should see in the camera GPS Wi-Fi Bluetooth USB 3 I think we'll probably see all of that Nikon's very good at making a very full featured body really Nikon's only problem at the moment and what they're offering is this inability to have a competitor to dual pixel AF so I think we'll see GPS Wi-Fi Bluetooth and USB 3 in in the new body, in the 650. Something I think Nikon should consider throwing in to be ultra competitive here, to come into the ring as a full gladiator and kick some butt, is to throw in focus peaking. Not a lot of DSLRs have this. I think perhaps Pentax is the only one that's offered this in a DSLR, but obviously it's possible, it's been done. Focus peaking would be a great option to have in the 650 and would just make it a full featured great value of a camera that could sell like hotcakes. This is what we need to see. Um, this is what I think would make it a killer DSLR and would make it really, really sell well. Um, this is what I want to see. And uh, I can virtually guarantee Nikon that if they would follow this recipe, these things, these tech specs, this thing would sell. It would dominate. It would be crazy good value. You could bring it out at $2,000, no problem. It would sell like hotcakes. What do you guys think? Are you interested in a 610 refresh? The 650, let's call it? Do you like the way I've specced it here? Is there something else you'd like to see? Bear in mind, this is an entry-level price point. We can't have everything in this camera. It can't be better than the 850. But I think as specced, it's not a threat to the 850. Still leaves room for a 750 refresh to add more things and a little better body. Because I should point out, I expect this to still be in a 610 style body, which is fine with me. At this price point, I would be ecstatic with this camera as we're discussing. What do you guys think? Do you like the camera as I've spec'd it? What would you add? What would you take away? What's important to you? Is there something I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss the successor to the 610. Let's call it the 650. What does it need to be? 
Will it, is, is it going to be relevant? Would it be relevant if we spec a camera like this? Um, I know mirrorless is coming out. Nikon's working on mirrorless. I think we're still going to see DSLRs selling well for a while yet. And I think a 650 spec this way would sell like crazy. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Looking forward to discussing this with you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.